This fine specimen is an Arctic Cat Bear Cat. It happens to be the 454 four wheel drive. This thing is amazing and capable, but it's always stumbled. I've been through the carburetor, I've been through the fuel tank, I replaced the gas cap, breather vent valve. It just feels like the air filter is clogged because it just can't get up to a certain RPM. One of the coolest things about all the work that I did on the fuel system is now when I go to start it, it starts pretty dang good too. So it used to be I'd get up to about 3500 RPM, 4000 RPM. I've owned this four-wheeler now for about six years. I've done a lot of work with it. I push cars, pull things, do all the things you gotta do. And it's a whole new lease on life. This thing runs amazing. As long as I've owned it, I haven't been able to go like that. Really happy and excited. Um, I've replaced the air filter, done all kinds of stuff to this. As it turns out, it was the voltage regulator rectifier. Look underneath of there, and there's some fins, and that's what it was the whole time. So it's okay at idle, but it's starting to just kind of hiccup a little bit. It's running a little bit rough. And I've got it hooked up here with the uh, adapter for 12 volt, and we're at 16 volts. Uh, when you rev it, it gets up to like 17 volts. You turn the key off. And you don't have it running, we get uh, 13 and a half, which is just supercharged battery. It looks like the regulator's not working properly. This was cutting out and running kind of crappy after two minutes. I turned the key off and uh, I'd be plowing snow. You can see I got the snow plow on. I turn it off and turn it back on, it'd start right up. It'd run for a little bit. The longer I left it off, the longer it ran running. It just basically overheat the uh, regulator and then the CDI uh, comes to the rescue and goes into safe mode to keep the RPMs down and keep from frying itself. New CDI on this, 600 bucks. Uh, new voltage regulator, close to 400 bucks. Uh, the plug in for it, if you follow the wire harness, uh, you see those three wires right there are for the stator. But I replace the voltage regulator and now it works awesome. It works so much better. Seriously, I could not be happy. <laughs> uh, now it's running at 14 and a half like it's supposed to. So I've got it all put back together. Got this hooked up to the cigarette lighter thing. And we got 14 and a half volts, we're fixed. So what's happening is, voltage regulators underneath of here uh, CDI box is down here. When this gets high voltage, over a certain voltage, instead of frying your five, six hundred dollar CDI box, your rectifier just shuts down the ignition system for the bike so that RPMs and everything stay down so you don't cook it. Which is great. I'm glad I didn't fry the CDI box, but for years I didn't know what it was. I mean, I've been, I've been plowing snow and moving all kinds of stuff, and the uh, whole time I had a bad rectifier in there. So if you look across through the We'll get you in there. You see the cooling fins? So there's your CDI box right here. And then that's your rectifier. That's on this particular model. There's a bunch of these up through 2001, 2002, and all through the 90s. Great machines, really well built. Uh, but there's just that one quirk, and it's a good quirk. Rectifiers for this are about 300 bucks, 350 bucks. I bought one off of Amazon for $25. These are the two voltage regulators or rectifiers. You can see that this one's got more beef to the cooling fins about it than this one does. This one's $25, this one's $350 or something like that. This one has a trailer type plug where you have like a ground and some other stuff offset from it. So on the factory one you've got red and you've got uh, white and black and then just your three field wires. Three field wires go across the bottom. It kind of makes sense the way it's laid out. This one's a blank. This thing's toast. Here's a comparison between the uh, one I got off of Amazon or eBay and the factory one. There's a lot of things that are similar about them. This just has more cooling fins on it. People will uh, cut the factory plug off the machine and then splice these onto it. This comes with six positions on it. 
Uh, we're not going to use the middle one right here, we're just going to use the rest. And it's pretty reasonable the way it's laid out with your field wires at the bottom. So I just need to make these all match. There's a little corrosion on this one, so i got to run a continuity test, but I can't do the other end of it till I cut it where things start getting permanent. So like I say, most people cut the other end of this and put a plug on and then you can do this. What I'm going to do is I'm going to make an adapter out of this plug so that I can use the other one. Um, I'm going to throw this in the garbage anyway basically. So I might as well cut all of this off of it. These onto here and then click it into here and then go from here to the machine. That way if I come across one of these, if I decide these are terrible and I want to go back to this, I can. This creates options. It also creates vulnerabilities. But we're going to squirt some Permatex right stuff in the back end of this. And just kind of seal it up and then wrap around the outside here with tape. And this is going to plug in like that. You get the tape to stretch, it just seals it up awesome. Seems like it's made out of decent plastic. I cut this long so that I have enough room to where I can adapt it or change it if I need to. Sometimes corrosion and a bad connection can create excess heat and resistance and that can cause stuff to get fried. But I think this one was just old. This is kind of a known quantity, a known thing that happens to Arctic Cat four-wheelers of this era. Pretty shiny. This one is the worst out of them. I'm going to actually cut it shorter because I can. I've got room for it. Go again. This was the dull one. Good enough. Nice thing this way is if this fails and it lasts a year or two years or three, who knows, uh, maybe I'll just replace it or keep a spare and I'll be able to swap the spare. There's a lot of tear down to get to this, so I'm entertaining ideas for relocating it into an area that you could do a trail fix on it if you needed to. Maybe having another one on hand as a spare to begin with. Had this out hunting. This is a slow failure. It happened over the course of about a year. There we go. Smush them down. In theory, that's all you have to do on these. But we're going to take a little further. We're going to add some solder to them. You don't have to do this. It's just extra insurance. This is where the rocket science comes in. I'm just kidding. It's easy. These are where the locking tabs need to be. What's a locking tab? A locking tab is this little guy that sticks up right there. So that has to be in unison with that. When you look really close, you can see that there's a little step in there. See that hole doesn't go all the way back? A little step is what secures that in there. It just locks it. So we've got these three. They go click. And then when this is clipped together, the red needs to go on the left. Just get them to all migrate up in there together at the same time if you can. Oh, there we go. So then we'll check it. We got red, red, black, black. Three of a kind. Click. That's it. And then this one plugs into the machine. And we are all connected. Just like in humanity. Even though a lot of us don't act like it. But those who do, we have more fun. So we're going to run this, make sure we're happy with it, and then we'll mount this more permanently. I just want to check, make sure we got 14 and a half volts. Before we had 16, 17 volts, that's too much. To get the rack off, to get this off, to get to the rectifier, you got to pull four bolts, 9 16 or 14 millimeter. I use an impact from the sides, and you'll see why. Um, then you've got to get these out. These are screws into rubber. There's like a rubber bushing. Rubber's wore out, so you gotta pry it up. These are a heaven send for that uh, because the bolts strip out and it just isn't any good. Um, as far as getting these out of here, you would have to tag these together and put them together. And uh, <laughs> it's kind of ghetto, but it is what it is. So I've got everything undone except for this guy stripped out. And other than that, it should come off. Uh, you got to unhook it from around the brake on this back side. Didn't, we weren't expecting that, right? And then uh, I've got the uh, Torx here. T30 Torx is the one that you want. Let's see if we can just tip this thing up out of the way. If they had strategic holes where the bolts are for this rectifier, this would be a lot easier. I may look into doing those because I may have to do it a few times. Uh, given I'm going to be using a cheap one, I'm not spending $300 on this, I'm spending about $30. Never could get that screw undone. 
I did get this undone. I got my battery cables pulled out and this is pulled to stop and I've got it just kind of pitched forward like that. That gives you all the room you need to work on this. No need to go too crazy with it. It's a 10. Look how fat these wires are. The new one, that was the main concern I had. The wires look so skinny. So here's the new rectifier. We've got it plugged in like that. If everything goes right, uh, the voltage will increase from 12 or 13 volts and be at 14 and a half. Here we are at 12.8. Give, give it a start. Uh, 14.5, 14, 14.6. 14, That's perfect. That's a fix. So I wound up putting it right back in the same place. And get to the plug there and I can basically just string something in there if I bring a spare. Because of the way I have the plug system, I can still get it in there. I would just need to have a zip tie or something. I could zip tie it to here or zip tie it somewhere under there. I had to rush a video a little bit because this thing's got some work to do. It's supposed to snow all night tonight and be 24 degrees. So that's enough. It should accumulate. I may use this one more time this season. Anyway, super happy about it. Uh, these screws ripped out, didn't hold up. So I just put in some new self-tapping screws. They seem to be holding up pretty good. I was super stoked about the whole thing. Thanks for watching. Be sure to click like and subscribe. Well, shout out to Super Dave 21 and also shout out to Tony H. Uh, for pointing out that I'm not showing up in people's notifications. I don't know what the deal is with YouTube and Google, but they want you to watch what they want you to watch and not what you want to watch. So stop by and see me sometime. Sure appreciate it. Take care.